JVC. Yes. This was one of the first ones that sounded good, but had kind of a badass look to it, which was it was black and it was green. And the manufacturers really flipped back and forth on some of their aesthetics because it was like Detroit. With each year you came out with a variation on your model. And the more industrial looking that you could make things as cassette tapes advanced from chrome to metal, you added those features in which, you know, supposedly gave you better sound. And then adding an equalizer on top of that was like, you know, that was grand living. I know this is silly, but it's like it was always a turn on to see it just slowly open because that connotated the quality and craftsmanship. I started really being conscious to collect these in the mid-90s. It fit into my life and fit into my interests. There was always a, a consciousness of this, that there was something a little bit bigger about this, that there's a history with these and boomboxes mean a lot more to culture and to people than just the object itself. And there isn't any one box that means more than another. It's really what you're playing through it. It's what the image of it conveys. And I started collecting them thinking they were going to disappear, and they literally did overnight. The boombox is, is, uh, oh my god, let me see, how do I say this? I'm like, uh, it was instrumental, and here's the key reason. In the beginnings of hip hop, the way the music was spread around the city was by cassette tape. Many great DJs um, recorded their sessions at parties in the Bronx. The way most people in the city first got any inkling of this new music was by cassettes, which either were recorded from the actual uh, mixing board from the party or somebody in the party with a boombox recording live in the party. If you didn't hear it there, then somebody you knew, if they were cool enough, might have had a tape from one of these parties. The tingling I got when I first heard this new sound, this new music, it was just like, what is this? Where is it coming from? I got to find the source. And that boombox, also known as that ghetto blaster, was that cool way of uh, having that music portable. <laughs> I think the first time I heard Cashmere by Led Zeppelin was out of a boombox. For me, I guess it was probably more about heavy metal than it was about hip hop. Whether it was punk, hip hop, rock, you know, ska, classical, whatever, it came through one of these. You know, the whole song was my radio. It was like the seminal boombox song. I mean, oh my God, I mean, that is perfect. My radio, I like it loud, you know? Like that feel of the boom, boom, boom was exciting, you know? And so they began to give more bass and more boom, hence the term boom box. You don't even have to be playing it for it to say something and it's they're all still quite ostentatious you know like they're they're big so what do you think of when you see this the boombox loud noises on the subway noise Red. I remember is that uh, people only had one volume and that volume was loud. What comes to mind? <laughs> there were people who carried them all over. Why anyone would carry that, it probably took about uh, 20 batteries to operate it. There's too much noise in the streets as it is without that. We all had one. Some of us had the good taste, however, not to, you know, take them out in public and carry them around in the streets. It's like this noise and why do people have to walk around listening to music? You know, out loud, everybody, you know. Really yeah. annoying you with this music, which I know you don't like, but I dare you to stop me. You, 
youth culture has always been about pissing off your parents. You know, I think if we went back to cave drawings, we found out that that was early graffiti done by, you know, the teenagers of the clan. Their drawing of some paleolithic bowl, whatever, pissed someone off. I want to say that as we traveled as young inner city kids, African American and Latino moved around the, the city in our little crews or posses and enjoyed life in the city in the summer times, you know, they began to, you could see there were people that weren't into us as people, that weren't into our music or our culture, and then as a result of that, developed what I considered a racially tinged backlash you know, to like, oh, I don't want those people, and I definitely don't want to hear their music. Sure, I know there were times when the boxes were loud and there was quote-unquote noise pollution, as they termed it, but I think it was a thinly veiled way of attacking, you know, people of color. Like, this took it on the street, and that changed music and empowered them to saying, I want to go to my bedroom, record something, and then bring it back out on the street so that you can hear what I want to say and I'm going to say it to music, and then I'm going to play that music, and you're going to like that music. And if you don't like that music, I'm going to play it louder, and I'm going to play it louder, and I'm going to make it so that I don't disappear, and what I want to say doesn't disappear. And these boxes became the, the carrier of that message. They became the vessel, um, and that's important. And the first boombox I do recall was, it was an eight-track boombox. It was the eight-track era, you know, so you stuck this big clunky tape into a box and just let it do its thing, you know? I remember there were a lot of electronic stores that, that basically carried, you know, what that inner city resident was looking for, and they would have some of the hottest boxes and boom boxes began to resemble discos where they would have flashing lights that pulsated to the beat of the music. What is it? The view sound level, which was just, you know, that's like a visual circus. This equalizer doesn't work worth anything. You know, towards the end of any culture, you have the second or third generation that steps into the culture, which is so far from the origination. And it's like, as soon as you have to say something is jumbo, it isn't jumbo, you know? Like, come on, you know, so. But that Walkman made it more private, made it more personal, was a lot cheaper to have then this massive thing was a lot easier to move around. When the boombox started to disappear, then you started to see people wandering along the street dancing to music that no one else could hear. That was stranger, but it uh, was a lot less annoying. We're in a culture right now where everything's gone so inwards. When you think about the iPod, when you think about you know Game Boy culture, it's like people have gone inwards. And so they're not demanding attention, and they also don't feel like, say, what they're participating in demands attention of others either. Here's my new boombox, you guys. <laughs> Thousand songs in here. <laughs> I just think we're kind of going to hit a little bit of a point where you're going to start seeing these on the streets again. I'm starting to see it a little bit now, but maybe it's because the artist antennas are always up a little bit higher than everyone else's, but... And when's the last time you think you saw a boombox, one of these, actually? Well, I actually have one at home. My wife exercises to it. Yeah, this is my favorite. The Sharp GF9696. It has these removable grills. If you really wanted to make your box look badass, it doesn't get any better than that. It's, it's the one I think I'll always have with me. It really was the BMW of the time and still is in my collection.